So you've met us now, I think, over the days, but Mpumi Ntombeni, she's the co-director with me of the Amphitheater, um, along with Neil Coppin. Um, but we are a massive collection of artists and thinkers and researchers and sociologists and customary rights holders across South Africa. Um, so you've heard the story, and when we came across the story in, in our research, uh, our colleague Kira Irwin and Pome had was doing interviews with Sangomas and the traditional healers, and she found this the story was gifted to her. And um, I, I'm speaking about it now, not her, because of just after the performance, so we tag teaming. So I've been mandated to. Uh, so, um, and from that, um, Mpume uh, and, and Kira drew this drawing. Um, and we, we found this incredible link, uh, in a way. It's a very rare thing where indigenous knowledge and scientific knowledge actually can touch um, and resonate in their own sovereign ways, but connected. So you can see what you've just watched is the, the Zulu traditions um, uh, of, of reincarnation. Uh, existed prior colony, uh, um, but was because of the Group Areas Act, because of the Bantu Education Act and the Anti-Witchcraft Act, these stories weren't allowed to be publicly shared or included in education. Um, but there is this incredible way in which you can learn about the water cycle from a spiritual um, aspect and the hydrocommons, how the ocean and the rivers and the, and the clouds are all connected. Um, and we thought this was a really important uh, era of research to explore together. Um, this led us down eight, uh, five years of research to make eight minutes uh, for this piece. Um, and why it took so long was we use a method which we are advocating in this space, we think is a very important method in our transdisciplinary toolbox, which we're going to be exploring, sharing together today, of call and response and of iteration. Um, iterative call and response social learning. This means that it's imagine like echolocation in dolphins and whales, that we can move through difficult and complex worlds uh, when we're constantly calling and responding and checking with each other. So we, um, uh, that call and response looked like um, taking layers upon layers as we were thinking about the stories that we were surfacing, what it meant, drawing them, with uh, collaborating with a variety of makers um, and thinking how do we honor a sacred story such as this one that has been lost because of apartheid and we want to give it, gift it back to our country. This film, by the way, is now freely available on YouTube and we um, creating other resources and, and, and literature around it for schools and for communities and, and other advocacy spaces. But this also meant that we, we didn't just, um, when we were working with the script and the story itself, so there were the Sangomas, that, uh, the traditional healers, uh, a Zulu historian, a sociologist, educational sociologist, but also marine scientists. Um, so when we were developing the script, there was lots of call and response. So you can see Dr. Kerry Sink, who's one of our leading marine biodiversity scientists, was thinking with us while we were working on it, because we wanted also every species that you saw in that film are accurate to the latest biodiversity assessments. So you could be a scientist watching that film, and you would be excited by all the particular species that we focus on, both in the river systems and in the deep sea. Um, you can be a, a, a cultural practitioner and see the referencing, very particular, subtle referencing from regalia to um, any of the kind of cultural identifiers in the film. This led us to deep storyboarding, and this was, this was a whole year and a half of, because we, we had the luxury of COVID. We, we were all together, but apart. And so through call and response, we were able to make many iterations of just the storyboarding of how would it look, where would the, um, down to, um, um, oh, that's showing the, the early animatic, um, but then the music. So we worked, collaborated with the Cape Town Opera um, and, and uh, different musicians who played particular kinds. The only Western instrument we have in it in is uh, the flute. The rest is all voices and the um, a farobo, which is a West African uh, instrument. Um, and so I'm just going to skip quickly through this because I don't want to take up too much time. But I will just show you two moments of where this, where making as a form of research was so important. Why artists should also have a hand at research, especially when it comes to D 
dealing with sacred knowledge is that this was one of the first explorations of what the ancestor spirit should look like and Mpumi, and I, Mpumi clocked it straight away so it wasn't this one it was this one um, and Mpumi clocked it straight away it looked a bit like Casper and she said why is it white though um, when we were exploring it um, and then we developed thought more about how it might look we had this western conception of what spirits or ancestors look like that was called in Australia in like deep uh, ex playful sometimes difficult uh, dialogue um, but the Sangomas came back and said no it must have no face that the audience can project their own ancestors onto, onto it so that the, the spirit then had no face also the spirit goes through its own life cycle and we wanted to explore that we also had a very expensive mistake where one of the animators, who Zulu themselves, um, felt that the, the ancestor should have this hat. But uh, and Pumi also clocked this quickly, and so did I, that this hat is only used for a particular marriage ceremony. And an ancestor wouldn't have that. She wouldn't be married in a typical way. So it was, we had to go frame by frame, because it's hand-drawn. We had to go frame by frame and remove that, uh, from which took, took us back two months. Um, and then all the research on the species, these are early drawings around what you're seeing in, in, in the animation around, so that when we, we start building the story books, we can have biodiversity uh, detailed books around the biodiversity and the spirituality. A lot of these plants also have cultural significance for traditional medicines and so on, and also have mythological memory um, that's also been lost because of the, the Witchcraft Act. Um, so I think I'll leave it there. I just wanted to show you um, the way, uh, these are early versions of it, um, the kind of ways in which making, uh, calling and responding can, can be research unto itself, but can really deepen our approach to, to ocean literacy.